Do you want an iron farm that works in Minecraft 114.3 pre-release 2 really, really well and gives you about 400 iron per hour for just a tiny little farm? Don't you go anywhere. I'm going to show you how. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Abermance, in my farm tutorial series. I am in 114.3 pre-release 2. They've changed the way iron farms work to the way they were meant to work in pre-release 1. These villagers now don't just get scared by zombies and poop out iron golems. No, they have to be able to work and sleep at least every 30 minutes for them to continue to produce their golems. So you've got to get just a little bit more clever. This farm produces iron at around about 400 ingots per hour, which for a very small farm that only uses four villagers in total, that is not too shabby. I am gonna show you how to make it. I do wanna give credit to Methods, small YouTuber who has identified the way to make this farm turn on and off and synchronize the workstations and sleeping patterns. I've then designed around that something slightly different and I think slightly simpler for you to be able to make in survival. To make this iron farm, you are gonna need nine signs, about four stacks of cobblestone, 11 hoppers, two chests, one name tag, and obviously the anvil to name it in, one comparator, one repeater, four veds, one vines, some string up to 20 pieces, at least 16, two tripwire hooks, one bucket of lava, at least two buckets of water. You can actually get away with doing just two buckets of water if you refill. Four looms, two sticky pistons, one observer, three redstone torches, three bits of redstone dust, 10 fences, it doesn't matter what wood it is, but 10 fences, 14 fence gates, again, doesn't matter what the wood is, about a stack and a half of slabs, about 20 blocks of glass, and optionally, around about 16 glowstone. You're also gonna need four villagers and one zombie. First thing we need is a rectangle that is 11 squares by five squares. I've marked it up in these different colors because these different colors represent slightly different things that we're gonna do with it. Now you don't have to dig this into the ground. You could make a tower if you wished. It'll be a three high tower. But if you're digging into the ground where these light blue squares are, this three by three, you wanna be digging a four deep hole. That being two, three, and four, and then nugget that one out as well. Then take out these six, take out the next six, and you want to start building yourself a set of steps up to the surface. And then in this one here, you're gonna be putting a chest. Now, it's up to you how you put your chest in here. You might just want a single chest, or you might want a double chest. I'm gonna put in a double chest like that, and then bring a hopper pointing into that chest using shift click or crouch click. Then feed another eight hoppers into that first hopper, again, using crouch click. And that way the tails of the hoppers will feed into the hopper. And that means anything that falls on these hoppers will fall into this chest. Next up, get yourself some glass blocks and put six glass blocks across there, you will still be able to open that chest because the glass is a transparent block and it won't block the opening of that chest at all. You could of course use a barrel there if you would prefer, it is entirely up to you. And then where in, you've got these hoppers, the block above the block above the hoppers, so the top row of the glass, put three signs, doesn't matter what would you use, just three signs. And then again, pressing crouch click, put a sign on each of those, and then again, a sign on each of these signs as well. That should give you a row of nine signs, and then take out this row of green wool and replace it with whatever wool substance you are gonna be using. With this red section, build on top of the wall and don't build in this three bit in the middle. That is an indicator for you. You don't need to build in there at all. And then pop yourself three across the edge. So you should still expose your red part there. And then what we can do is we can extend this wall all the way around beyond the edge of the hole, 
come around again and right up all the way back to that as well. And then what I want you to do is where this has got not the red section but the one after it, pop a block on the top and bring it across. What you should find is that that leaves you six blocks, one, two, three, four, five, six on the inside of this part of the wall and make that part two blocks high, exactly like that. And then what you can do is bring this bit up another one, but leave this open just for the moment. Time to make some collection platforms now. So on this platform where this wall has come across, come out eight with this one being ones. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Fill that entire lot up and then bring a wall out on the outside. And this wall needs to lap all the way around the outside like this and then repeat on the other side. And you will have a platform that looks like this. This glowstone, by the way, is entirely optional. It's just to stop mobs from spawning on the edge of the thing. But in reality, it doesn't make a lot of difference apart from you not wanting the mobs to fall down and bite your face off. So don't worry about it if you haven't got the glowstone. Then what you wanna do is you want to come inside here. You may want to just nick out one of those blocks so you can escape and put your one bucket of water on each corner of these red blocks. You've left the red blocks here so you know you're putting it on the right block. So one there and one there, and then hop yourself up out of the little notch that you've made. That will run all the way to the edge of that block, but it will not run over. Then get yourself your lava bucket, and on that block, the face of the block, pop your lava bucket. That will flow over the entirety of that three by three hole. Before you put any water in the tray, make sure you pop that block back in there, otherwise it is gonna go horribly wrong. Then get yourself a water bucket or ice blocks if you wish, and you're gonna be putting a water bucket every other block. So one in the corner, miss a block, one in the corner, miss a block, one in the middle, miss a block, one in that bit, miss a block, and in the corner. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and five. That gives us water source blocks all the way along. And if we turn around, you can see the water runs right to the edge, but does not run over. Repeat that on the other side. Now this next bit is entirely optional, but you probably wanna be doing this in an area where water can freeze. So if you're building this in the mountains or a snow biome or something like that, you need to cover up the source water blocks with a solid block. So come along here and cover up all of these source water blocks with a solid block. Again, this is optional. This makes no difference to the function of the farm, but you don't want these water blocks to freeze and this will stop them freezing. That's a very good way of doing it. Then. What we want to do is we want to come to this front and we're going to count up 21 blocks with that being the first one. One, two, three, 21. That is some tower. Now what we're going to make here is a combined detector and pulse extender circuit, which sounds complicated, but in reality it's not too bad. On top of this 21 high turret, I want you to put an observer. This observer is brilliant. I want you to have its little red bum facing inwards across the gap like that. So don't have it facing outwards or to the sides, have it inwards across like that. And then on its face, put a cobblestone. Now, what we can do now is we can lose this entire tower, but it actually doesn't matter if you lose it or not. Then on here, what I want you to do is place a couple of blocks and take out those two and put a sticky piston on the top of that. Now what's gonna happen when that sticky piston extends, it's gonna be able to retract that cobblestone block, which will change the state of the block in front of the observer, and the observer will let out a little redstone fart so as it knows something's happened, and then put a block underneath that observer because we're gonna to need to place something on it to collect that redstone fart. That is a repeater, which goes there like that. Then we put in another block on the side of that, and on the side of that, we put in another block again that looks a little bit like that. On the side of this block, put a redstone torch, put a redstone, uh, a, a dot of redstone there, so you need a piece of cobble. That's gonna light that up. On this block here, facing into this block, put a comparator. That comparator is gonna suck a signal out of a small hopper clock in a moment, and that will be what gives us our delay. What I then want you to do 
is put a hopper downwards into that, face a hopper facing into it, take out that hopper, put a hopper facing back. So the tails of the hoppers are facing into each other. That is really, really important, okay? And then we're gonna get a block like that. We're gonna shove our redstone so as it goes over the top. Now that redstone will power this block which will have the action of locking this hopper. And that's what makes this thing work. We're then gonna put that redstone torch there, which will turn off. And when that is off, that hopper there is not locked. When that is on, that hopper will be locked. So it kind of switches the locking mechanism of these two hoppers. We're then gonna come pop block on there and put one underneath. Remove that block. That is gonna have redstone dust on top of it. Then we're going to have a block going up so that redstone's running into this block so when that redstone torch lights up it will light that redstone up which will power this block and that torch there is the torch that ultimately powers the entire system so all of this is to make that torch right there work right in there and then in this hopper i want you to put 16 blocks of something like cobble works really really well so 16 blocks of cobble I just want to demonstrate how this is going to work. I'm going to pop a redstone lamp on top of there. This is not part of the structure, it's just for testing. What you can see is this resting state is on. What we want it to do is to turn off for a very short space of time at very specific times in the day, and that will enable this entire system to work. Pop your repeater here to two ticks. Just right click on it once so you can see it's in that position. That's three, that's four, that's one you want it on to. So we're gonna pretend that this piston is pulling away this block. So if I pull that block away, you can see the lamp turns off and it stays off for about seven seconds until it turns back on again. And then if we put the cobble back, the lamp turns off again and it will stay off for about seven seconds and turns back on. So that is because this cobblestone here, once this uh, lets out a redstone fart, that powers this block that turns off this lamp which turns off this which unlocks the hopper which allows this to take a signal out which then turns the lamp back on again and as a result but it takes as long as it takes for these to flow these 15 blocks into the other hopper and then when it turns back on again the blocks flow black and it resets itself that's how it works and this is going to be triggered in a slightly different way we're going to be using a trip wire hook and this trip wire hook is going to sit on that block there we're going to connect it up in a little while but that's how it's going to actually have its system turned on this is not going to be a redstone lamp it is going to be a sticky piston so let's get the sticky piston on top facing upwards you can see its resting state is powered we then need a glass block and the glass block goes on top now when it's powered it's going to be in amongst these four glass blocks and then pop another four glass blocks next to it like that. When it's unpowered, that will drop that glass block down. Uh, so the, uh, the glass block sits there and there is a too high gap in that section there. And that's what we're trying to achieve. Then what we're going to do is we're going to pop a glass block right there. We want some points of interest specifically some workstations I'm going to use a loom I'm going to put a loom there a loom there and a loom there now this could be any workstation you want I'm using a loom simply because it is the cheapest of the workstations to build then pop a glass block by pressing shift onto the looms like that get yourself a bed and pop a bed so as the head of the bed i.e., where the pillow is is facing this box here if you have it the other way around like that it doesn't work so well so have it this way around that is brilliant and then what I want you to do is get yourself some vines and pop the vines on the face of that block we are starting to get to the point where we can prime this system we're going to build the spawning platform for the golems now so come to this glass block that's got the vine stuck on it and pop it too high get yourself a slab and come across over this kind of whole area here with a slab. Think of this now as your central point. 
put another slab on top of that and come out in this direction too. Come out in this direction too, which gives you five across. Then come out in this direction, three, and the other direction, including this one, three. So that's another two. So you've got a cross shape that looks like that. You then want to fill this in. Now these are top half slabs, so they are spawnable. If they were bottom half slabs, they would not be spawnable and the form would not work whatsoever. So you should find that you've got a platform now that is seven along one side and five along the other that looks a little bit like that. And that's exactly what we're looking for. And then get yourself a fence and on the edge of the five high part in the corner, put one fence and then one fence above it. That means you can then run a fence along the entirety of the width of that short side. Repeat it on this side as well. You could use a block on this, but there is a slight chance that you could cause one of the spawning golems just to get a little bit stuck. And any slowing down of these golems means you get a reduced rate of production of iron, and that's not something that you want. Then come here with the cobblestone, put one cobblestone on the edge of that block, then another one, and then one on top of it. Then come over the other side and build it so as it is seven long. Get yourself an, a gate, wooden gate, put a wooden gate on each of those. You can then open that wooden gate up. That's perfect. And then come around the other side of this block and you want to make sure that you've got a two gap between the platform and this block here. And just pop that block out like that. And then if you wish, and I recommend it, put a bottom half slab on that. So that ceases to be a spawnable block. Repeat that on the other side. Now we want to get a water stream that is gonna eject these iron golems really, really fast. But this is half slabs here. And that means that if you put water onto them, they're gonna waterlog and it's just gonna be a real pain in the bum to be able to sort it out. So put a half slab on top. That half slab can then be used to uh, put the water onto the platform without going through the other side and waterlogging it. And what you wanna do is just pop the water on top of the raised half slabs that you've got there. And then put another row of half slabs all the way along next to it. Because what you've got there is you've got a static um, stream of water. And if you remove those slabs there, it becomes a less static. You can see the, uh, the water is flowing away. Then put a water bucket on just the one end. You'll see the water flows all the way across. And then you can remove these slabs and you've got a water platform that has water flowing in either that direction or that direction with no static points. So if a golem spawns anywhere on that platform, you know you're gonna be safe that it is gonna flow off super, super fast. So before we get this system ready to rumble, we need to prime this tripwire hook. So we're gonna get the tripwire hook here and we're gonna put a piece of string on it. You can just see the strings hitbox there. Now these are really easy now to be able to add further strings. That's one, two, three, four, 19 and 20. Now you have to be a minimum of 16 blocks away. So 16 pieces of string from any point of interest. I like to be sure. So I brought this out 20, but it doesn't have to be quite so far. And then on the last piece of string, I want you to put a block, take out that last piece of string and get yourself a tripwire hook, pop it there. And that tripwire is now primed. You can see it is taking away that, uh, sticky piston beautifully, and that's gonna be sending signals all the way through that. Then come underneath your block with the tripwire hook on, two blocks, come out two blocks, and then come in one block. So you can see you've got kind of this L shape that's two blocks below it. You then need your bed, and put your bed facing in this direction, so come under the string, so as the pillow is on the outer cropped bit of that there. Then bring another block here and put in your point of interest. Again, I'm gonna use a loom simply because that is the cheapest one to make. And we're then gonna make 
a uh, bit of a surround for this so we need to have a block on top of the loom so you need to press crouch and then we're going to have a block at the end of the bed and above one a block to the side and another block to the side here like that and then we're going to build a similar shape one block above it like that so you can see that's the kind of shape that you've got then put a block on that side and a block on that side and that just helps to keep everybody in now we're ready to get this thing moving just a couple more things that we need to do before we get cracking put yourself an anvil down because we want to make ourselves a name tag i'm going to make this name tag say frightening oh not as they spell it frightening fred that will do so we'll have frightening fred name tag that's perfect get rid of that anvil you don't need that anymore then get yourself a slab pop a slab on top of the observer block and then give him a little peak cap because when this block comes up that can be a spawnable block and you do not want anything spawning on there pop one on there as well now you've taken the anvil away that ceases to be a spawnable block and we've also put one on here and they're the only potentially spawnable blocks that we've got in the system that's going to get in our way then come up here take out that solid block because that is going to be right in the way of what it is we want to do now we want to get ourselves a zombie now you can lure zombies in using minecarts and things like that i have done a tutorial on how to transfer villagers it works exactly the same way with zombies so please do feel free to go and have a look at that the link will be in the description below but pop yourself a zombie in that hole that zombie can't go anywhere because it can't jump up on these blocks because this is in the way the ceiling is too high for it it won't be able to cope so that's blocking it in and it is officially trapped we then want to get some villagers now we put the villager in this one first spawn in a villager or transport it in using a minecart and dispense it in so as it sits on the pillow it has no way to pathfind anywhere except for this loom and when it goes to the loom and does work it's going to cross the tripwire and stand in the way which is going to flip the switch which is great when it then moves out of that system it will stop the tripwire being flipped and it will give it another pulse all that remains is to spawn in our villager station right here and we need three villagers to come into this pod which is why we've got three beds so one two three you can see they instantly turn into shepherds because we've got a loom under here and that's their profession that's associated with the loom these villagers are currently in a state of panic they are stressed they're not happy because they're scared of the zombie they think the zombie is going to eat their face and i can tell you if the zombie had half a chance it probably would so they won't sleep and they won't work and if they won't sleep and they won't work they're not going to be very effective at producing zombies uh, producing iron golems they're not very effective at producing zombies unless a zombie bites their face off but what this can do is when it works because this is not affected by the zombie in any way when it decides it wants to go and work it will flick that switch and when it flicks the switch the zombie will drop down a level it will then be moving out of the scared zone these guys won't be stressed anymore they won't be in panic mode and they will work if it is daylight when it turns night time this fella will obviously stop working and lay down in his bed when he lays down in his bed that will move him out of the tripwire which again drops the zombie down a level these guys stop being scared they stop being in this panic mode that they go into and they will sleep now they do not have to sleep for very long literally a few seconds is all it takes then the zombie will pop back up again they'll go into panic mode once more and as a result they will remain in panic mode pretty much indefinitely and as in panic mode they will bonk these zombies out left right and center now as you can see they haven't done anything just yet because they've not slept and they've not worked and until they sleep and work they're not going to do anything so we need to make that happen so you can see here it's night time the guy on the right hand side he has gone to bed he hasn't worked yet he has just gone to bed these guys on the left however they're in scared panicky mode and they won't sleep because the zombie might eat their face now what i'm going to have to do is try and assimilate a daylight cycle so i'm going to make it daytime that will make this fella on the right wake up and eventually he'll go to work so let's do time 
set day, up he pops and ultimately what will happen is he will go through that tripwire and when he does then the zombie will drop down so we just need to wait a few moments for that to happen you can see there the zombie has dropped down and these guys are now no longer scared of him but they've not slept yet so they're not actually going to uh, work they need to be ready and slept before they'll actually work. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna assimilate a night cycle, time set night, and what will happen now is these guys will fall asleep because the zombie will drop down because the guy on the right hand side will go to bed. There you go, they go to sleep. They're now sleepy boys, but the zombie will pop back up again and frighten them out of their socks and up they pop. It's like, hang on a minute, there's a zombie. Please don't sleep and eat my face. And what happened the next time they cycle through, they will start to produce some golems because they'll have the opportunity to work. So you can see our little mate there is working. These guys are working too. And as a result, we're gonna start to see iron golems spawning on these platforms fairly shortly. And there we go, there's one jump straight down there, straight into the kill chamber, that's how we want it. And they should come fairly regularly now, so we're just gonna watch for a little bit and see how often we can get one of these fellas to spawn. We should be seeing a rate of something like 400 iron an hour, but I'd be very interested to see whether or not it works that way. There's another one, and let's just watch just for a little while. So there you can see, we're getting a golem spawn about every 30 to 40 seconds, which is actually a lot faster than the previous iron farm that I did. So that's quite a nice little system. So we're gonna be producing iron at a rate of knots. We've left the system going for an hour now. So I just want to see what the rate of production is. We've got another fella just popping in the sink there. But our rate of production after just about 60 minutes is, there we go, so one, two, three, four, four and a half stacks of iron plus very very nearly or now it is just over a stack of poppies so it's actually a very good rate for a little personal iron farm that's as much iron as you could possibly need one pretty decent iron farm that is designed specifically for 114.3 pre-release 2 so this is a snapshot it could change but we're fairly confident now that this is probably the way it's going to stay so I've got some iron in my hand and I'm very happy with the result. If you've enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying it and I will keep on making them. Also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see it in my sub club and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.